And if that weren't bad enough, you have a $2 trillion stimulus, and the Republicans are just as guilty as the Democrats when it comes to this thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at what is in this $2 trillion behemoth. That's right, trillion with a T, $2 trillion spent on this stimulus in a single day. What's in this thing? First of all, you have the direct payments. This is the thing that people are talking about where the government will be sending out individual checks to every citizen in the United States. So according to this, the direct payments, single Americans would receive $1,200. Married couples would get $2,400. So there's really no advantage to being a married couple other than the fact that you just get the amount for both you and your spouse. So it's the same amount for every adult, 1200 It's just married couples get it lumped together because they're married. And then you would also see $500 for each child under the age of 17. Now, doing some simple math, we can find these calculations pretty quickly. There are uh, 253.8 million adults in this country and 73.2 million children under the age of 18 which means that if you add that up together and, and take those amounts, you get a grand total of $341 billion. Now, there's only 140.9 million taxpayers in America. So I, I had a friend ask me, well, how is this different than just giving a tax cut to everybody? And here's how. You just heard the number. We, we are a nation of 327 million people, yet there's only 140.9 million taxpayers. You see the discrepancy there? The vast majority of the American population doesn't pay. Now, you know, to be fair, there are some people that it makes sense that they're not paying if they're minors, for example, when there's about 73 million minors that aren't paying taxes. That actually makes sense. But if you add that up and you do the math, and this is just this one provision, not the $2 trillion stimulus, just the, che just the checks. That means if you are a taxpayer, your $1,200 costs you $2,420. Only the government could make a check to you cost you money. And not only cost money, but cost almost double what that is. And by the way, that's assuming that there is no, uh, th there's no interest at all which, of course, it's a loan because it's debt that we're acquiring, so there is interest involved. And that's also assuming that there will be no inflation, which is kind of unlikely considering the Fed just printed $4 trillion worth of money. We'll get to that in a second. But the point is, even if there's no inflation and there's no interest on the loan whatsoever, it's still costing you more than double the amount that they're giving you for you to get it it would make far more sense to them to just give a tax break. You see, here's the thing. Governments, especially in emergencies, they have a hard time undoing policies that give money to people because they're popular. What is really easy for the government to undo is when you deny something to them. If we were to give a tax break until this emergency was over, you better believe the second that they believed the emergency was, you know, going to give out the all clear signal that they would start taxing again. That's not a thing that we have to worry about them saying, oh gosh, we forgot to turn the taxing back on. So something like that makes sense because they're going to undo it of their own volition. Something like this, they may not. Something like this could continue on, you know, indefinitely. Remember that Social Security was supposed to be a temporary program to help people that were in trouble during the Great Depression in the 1930s. And we're still going on about it right now. I'm not saying that this is necess necessarily means we're going to have a universal basic, basic income across the board for the rest of time, but that's a possibility. And it's not a possibility that the government is just going to forget to, you know, continue to take taxes. That's not a thing that they're going to forget. And so it made more sense to stop taking taxes rather than doing this massive redistribution of wealth because there's a massive portion of the American population that doesn't pay taxes. And so by any other definition, this is a redistribution of wealth. Smart and cautious people also, when they do get these checks, 
They're going to save it. They're not going to be spending a lot of money because, I mean, they understand this is an unprecedented time. They're probably going to want to save on to every penny as long as they can. They're probably living on a limited budget right now, which would be the smart thing to do. But that also means if they're not going to spend it, that's not something that's going to stimulate the economy. So this thing not only is going to cost us more than double what we're actually paying for it or the money that we're actually receiving, but on top of that, it's still not going to accomplish its intended goal. That's not even counting that there are $4 trillion in bank bailouts by the Fed. So the federal government, which, by the way, didn't even need the approval of Congress, just bailed out with $4 trillion, double what was spent in the stimulus package, bailing out to the banks. Now, if there is anything that the left and right ought to be able to get together on, you would think it would be this. Being against $4 trillion of our money, almost the entirety of the federal budget being spent in one day to bail out the banks. That means... In total, we have spent $6 trillion, and none of it was offset by cuts. So, your family is probably going through a tough time right now, just like almost all of us. You're probably conserving as much as you can, maybe even eating a little less than you normally do, being a little more conservative with the family budget, because you don't know what's coming around the bend, and that's the smart thing to do. If you know that you're going to have to spend a lot in one area because you may have expenses like you're spending more on certain things that you wouldn't normally spend it on, you got to cut back in some areas. And that's what a normal, rational person does. The federal government is not normal nor rational. They just spend a whole bunch of money on top of what they were already planning to spend. And so this is not only $6 trillion in spending, It's $6 trillion in spending on top of what they had already budgeted for us to spend, which was a little under $5 trillion. So they already spent more than their entire annual budget in pure debt spending in a single week. I cannot overstate how dangerous this is. Because the entire federal budget is only $4.8 trillion, and we spent $6 trillion in less than a week. We acquired all that debt in no time flat. To put this into perspective, it took America until 1986. Remember, we were founded in 1776. So 210 years to acquire $2 trillion in debt, just the cost of the stimulus package. If you're counting that plus the bailout that the Fed, the Federal Reserve just did, that would be $6 trillion. It took us to 2002 to get to that level. So between George Washington and George W. Bush, that's how long it took us to get to $6 trillion in debt. We acquired that in 24 hours. Think about that. What it took America 226 years to get to, we did in a day. And that's where we are right now. We are in a completely unsustainable path. There is no way we can continue on like this. And to put this into perspective for people on the right and the left, whether you think it was justified or not, whether you thought it was a good idea or not, whatever, to put it into perspective, you remember how angry the Tea Party was, or how angry conservatives were at the level of spending during the Obama administration? I was one of them, and, and I stand by that. The Obama administration was always thought of as being having just outrageous levels of spending, and it did. The entire amount of debt that President Obama racked up in his first term President Trump's administration spent in a day. His whole first term, all the way up to 2012, that was all the debt that the Obama years racked up. President Trump spent it in a day. And what's crazier about this is it's not over. President Trump is actually suggesting we should actually do more than this. This is a tweet from him earlier. 
when the interest rates for the United States being at zero, this is the time to do our decade-long awaited infrastructure bill. It should be very big and bold, $2 trillion, and focused solely on rebuilding once the once great infrastructure of our country, phase four. Are you kidding me? We just spent $6 trillion, and you right now are pushing a $2 trillion infrastructure bill for your pet projects. That's absolutely insane. You want to spend $8 trillion in the span of a couple of months? If this takes place, if this takes place, then President Trump will have accrued more debt than the entire eight years of the Obama administration within the span of a couple of weeks. So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning. <laughs>